Hey guys, this video is going to be an introduction to the Renin Angiotensin system. Uh, caveat before we begin, I'm only going to focus on what you need to know for board examination or other testing purposes. I'm not going to get into the, all the nitpicky uh, small details. Um, the primary take home message of the Renin Angiotensin system is it's one of the main mechanisms by which our body, the human body, understands the current blood pressure inside of it. And uh, this system acts to raise that blood pressure. So when the system's not working as uh, powerfully, the blood pressure lowers, and when the system works like it should and works very powerfully, blood pressure raises. So this is gonna be some take home points with the renin angiotensin system. Let's get started. Um, renin down here, which is the primary starting protein in this whole system, is made by JG cells. And these JG cells get activated to make renin by two main mechanisms. The first of these mechanisms is by the macula densa cells. Now these macula densa cells are cells in the distal convoluted tubules of the nephron that sense how much sodium is inside the filtrate. And if not enough sodium is in that filtrate, macula densa cells know that the blood pressure is not where it should be. So they release prostaglandins that activate these JG cells to make renin. The other mechanism by which the JG cells get activated to make renin is by a simple baroreceptor mechanism. Baroreceptors are pressure receptors that sense the current blood pressure. And they're located in all different structures throughout our body, but the ones here uh, inside the kidney can sense the blood pressure inside the kidney, and if blood pressure is not high enough, they will also activate the JG cells. And these JG cells, we've kind of talked about, they make the renin, they're located in the afferent arterial of the nephron. So macula densa cells are located in the distal convoluted tubule. JG cells, which are the ones that make the renin, are in the afferent arterioles. Now, you'll have to look at a picture of the way the nephron is situated, but in proximity, these two types of cells, the macula densa cells in the distal convoluted tubule and the JG cells in the afferent arterial, are actually right next to each other. And that's how the prostaglandins made by the macula densa cells can then just travel and diffuse into the JG cells and activate them to make, to make more renin. Now, why do we care about this renin? Well, this renin is an enzyme. And enzymes catalyze chemical processes. Now, the liver, which is another organ in our body, makes a proenzyme called angiotensinogen, or a, a proprotein. Now, that, meaning that by itself, this protein doesn't do anything. It's inactivated, as the ogen ending tells you. But when renin is sent there from those JG cells into the afferent arterial, so now it's in the blood supply, when it's in the blood supply and it mixes with angiotensinogen, the renin catalyzes this chemical conversion to angiotensin 1. So it went from angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. Now, angiotensin 1 has uh, some processes that it does, but it's not really the main active molecule we want to talk about. The main one we want to talk about is angiotensin 2. Now angiotensin 1 gets turned into 2 by an enzyme, angiotensin converting enzyme, also known as ACE, which is made by the lungs. So that's one thing to keep in mind about this whole system is we're involving, it's a multi-organ mechanism. So we first started in the kidney and we made renin. Then we went to the liver, which made angiotensinogen, and the renin and the angiotensinogen started this process. And finally, we had to use something that's found only in the lungs, that being ACE, to make angiotensin II, which is the active molecule. We'll get to exactly what it does here in a second, but this is the main guy that's gonna turn up the blood pressure in our body. Uh, I put down here in brown just a couple of clinical notes. You might have heard of ACE inhibitors, or down here, ACE, I stands for inhibitor, ACE inhibitors. These are a, a drug, an a pharmacologic agent used in a lot of medicine, and so are angiotensin receptor blockers, which are another agent. Now these are antihypertensives, meaning if this system is overworking or if we have too high blood pressure for a different reason in our body, you can give a drug, an ACE inhibitor, which will prevent ACE from doing its job, thus preventing blood pressure being raised. Angiotensin receptor blockers essentially mean that angiotensin II can't go where they want. They can't bind with the receptor because it's being blocked by this drug. So both these drugs effectively have the same outcome which is um, decrease or not as much uh, raising of the blood pressure, inactivation of this system, I guess, would be a better way to say it. So 
What does angiotensin II do? Well, it does a ton of different things, but the main things that it does, increases sympathetic activity throughout the body, it vasoconstricts all different kinds of blood vessels, causes the release of antidiuretic hormone from the pituitary, and causes the release of aldosterone from the adrenal cortex. Now, all four of these things lead to increased blood pressure. So that is the mechanism by which those macula densa cells and those baroreceptors activate the JG cells in the afferent arterial to release renin, which then causes the conversion of angiotensinogen from the liver into angiotensin 1, which gets converted by ACE in the lungs into angiotensin 2, causing these four outcomes, which ultimately leads to an increase in blood pressure.